So their level of insanity is beyond that of spoiled children. And it's been on full display with so many in our nation's Congress. You know, it's time that we send them back to the fifth grade where they can learn some basic human development and emotional skills. But let's take a look at one particular notable winner in this video. Oh, and as a quick aside, the Democrats, they do not want unity. If you're a conservative, what they want is you silenced. Welcome to the Candids series, where it's just as it sounds. Candid, unscripted, right in the moment, because it's something that just needs to be talked about right now. So, let's get into this. Hi, y'all. I'm about to show you this video that covers some very, very important things for us, for our culture, and for the people in it. Um, but it's long, so I just wanted to let you know ahead of time that what I'm going to do is I'm going to release it in full, just so you can see it's there in its full context. But then I'm going to divide it up probably in, I'll figure out after record, but probably two or three different parts so that they're smaller and easier to digest, maybe 10, 12 minutes a piece or so. So I just wanted to let you know that. Uh, that's what you're about to get into with this video. After that, you'll see you'll see it divided up into parts. So I hope it means something. I'm going to ask that um, if you see it and it is a value and you connect to it, please, please like, share, and subscribe. That's what helps grow this channel. That's what helps get our voice out to more people, maybe rescue a few, maybe bring a few to our side as we continue in this battle that we are in. Because trust me, we are in a battle for the soul of our nation. We really are. There will be a series coming out on that eventually as well. So hope you all enjoy, but here it is. Cori Bush and anyone like her in Congress who's signing on to her House resolution have beyond any question proved that they do not want unity at all. They do want something, however. They want revenge. And that thing is, is that which they want revenge against? It, it's, what, it's what they themselves have created. You can't make this stuff up. They are obsessed in their hatred. And they, they just can't operate any other way. They've betrayed and forsaken principle and integrity in order to pursue what their darkened souls are just ravaged for. And they consume dignity and honor. And what they expel is themselves. Now, Cori Bush, a freshman senator from Missouri... She's a special kind of character committed to a special brand of lunacy. To give you some idea, she's a member of what is known as the Squad. Does any more need to be said? Think AOC. Just in this one image alone, she reveals so much about herself. She's proving herself to be a racist in her statement, for one. We already know that, regardless of the media and political written and verbal vomit and bile. The unfortunate storming of the Capitol building was many things. But a show of white supremacy? <laughs> it was not. The argument of the left has been, See? White people did this and, and nothing happened. D they didn't get shot. Really? Really? You see, that's funny because uh, they, they, from the side of their collective mouth, they, they say that, then out the other, they literally praise the white woman who was shot and killed. Oh, and let's not forget the over 100 and growing arrests and seizures happening with those involved. Oh, and when NFAC shows up, like this, militant, loaded with guns, and they stop white motorists driving and demanding reparations on the spot or they can't pass, and this was done at Stone Mountain Park in Georgia, a state park, and the police do not even make a presence, well, I suppose it's just convenient just to focus on one event and cherry-pick the details and paste them all together like some great kindergartner's collage of random pieces to make political art. Or how about at the height of the fight for the civil rights in the 60s? And the Black Panthers showed up, again, with loaded guns right at and standing on the Capitol building, and absolutely nothing happened to them. And that is when they were fighting against real and obvious racism. But again, they don't really want to tell the whole story in its greater context. You see, truth only hurts their cause. But more on that, more on that in a bit. Now, second, Senator Bush has proved herself to be a divisive and shameless propagator of lies because she knows full well the issue of some senators objecting to a, a state's vote was completely legitimate, legal, and constitutional. The objection to a vote is also not a new concept as it's happened so many times before. It's not wrong for a senator to represent their constituents just because the esteemed spoiled child, Miss Bush, and her childlike play partners disagree with them. 
She's not been made the queen authority in an office in which she is clearly, by her lack of character and intellect, is not qualified to sit. I would love to look her right in the eyes and just tell her, Miss Bush, you are no servant of the people, and you are a tyrant, and you are an instigator, and your hatred alone should disqualify you from ever holding public office. Then for those others who were unfortunately voted in, I would tell them, this is the same for you all, who share that same sentiment with, with Bush. You're not to be respected, and you are not respectable. You are not honored. You are a perfect, detestable display of unfortunate broken humanity. You're toxic, and the way that you continue to divide this nation at the risk and push it even further to the brink of war with itself, you're encouraging of that hatred and division in order to further divide this country and force warring and fighting between the populace does not make this nation strong. It makes it weak. And it's people like you that bring it closer to its knees. That's exactly what a traitor looks like. When you call a man tre treasonous for doing something that he never did and claiming something he never said, and in doing so you set this country on fire against itself, then it is you who should be tried and convicted. Convicted, without question. With just about a week left in office, the Democrats and their insatiable hatred uh, when Trump was on his range of out and their derangement and fighting for impeachment now and invoking both the 25th and the 14th Amendment, these people have reached a new insanity, as well as anybody from the GOP who's supporting them in this absolute division of our nation. This man, he's out of office. Why are they risking further angering of the population and violence as a result? You know exactly what this can cause. Yet they keep claiming that they want unity, except they do everything possible they can to betray their words. I am so sick of hearing the word insurrection over something that was not an insurrection. They just keep beating that drum over and over, pounding that damn lie. Into the, into the heads of the well-primed, low-informed who can't even recognize obvious truth because of their blind hatred themselves that they've allowed, yes, allowed to overtake and control them. They can't even think for themselves anymore. They allow others, including the media, to do all that for them. They have no interest in truth. Among all the good they do, that fact is a glaring immorality and irredeemable brokenness of what was once their character is what now shines as bright as a raging inferno in the dark of night. Oh, and would you care to know some facts? Okay, a couple points to make about the, about the riots. Donald Trump, you probably know, actually still was speaking to his supporters when these riots began and in, in the people infiltrated the Capitol building. Donald Trump called for peace many times over, including his speech in Texas. A few days later, Donald Trump also called in extra security in order to ensure the safety and peace and protection during his opponent's inauguration. That's character. But the raging lunatics at large cannot recognize him. Or the good he does. I almost want to say that you dirty, vile people on the left, you owe this man an apology. But an apology does not cut it. What you really owe him... And the nation is another presidency without your involvement in your schemes since you did nothing but f of his presidency this entire turn. Even saying that he colluded with Russia, although he actually released the phone call that you said was a damnable offense, which it showed was nothing. Yet you still did not stop. You people are so full of hate and anger and you're driven by such a desire for power that you just, you're just the most disgusting sycophants walking this planet. People who do not understand the Constitution really should not be commenting on what is and what is not constitutional. Since when is upholding a constitution, constitutional right given to question of the vote, and this isn't exactly the first election that this has happened, mind you, a violation of the Constitution? Since when is it? I'll ask like this. Since when is abiding by the Constitution unconstitutional? I have never seen so many people angry at folks who are literally obeying the Constitution. Since when is it unconstitutional to act in concert with the Constitution? These people literally claim that it is a betrayal to the Constitution to uphold the Constitution and the duties of their offices afforded by it. Can you get any more absurd? There is no question they do not want unity. These people have a mental illness and that they refuse to be healed from. The problem with this mental illness is it literally makes them 
evil. Because to lie and crucify someone and do everything in their power to crush the voice of half a country while e elevating a major political party to gain absolute and total control is evil. On top of all that, people like the infamous Miss Bush have, have they forgotten the Constitution speech and debate clause? You know what would be fair? Getting rid of any of the Republicans in Congress who actually defended and abetted and supported and cheered on and funded the so-called insurrection at the White House. Oh, hey, and would you care to guess how many that is? Literally, nobody did that. But the media would not tell you that, would they? Oh, and at the same time, we need to get rid of every Democrat congressperson who supported and cheered on and funded the insurrections on this country's foundation of business and livelihood and personhood and the pursuit of life and liberty and happiness. The streets of our nations that were burning, businesses burning down, destroying our infrastructure, looting and murdering of over 30 persons related to CBLM and Antifa riots, as well as the attacks against the police. Perhaps that would make things fair. I wonder how they would feel about a clean sweep in that way. That would also include Biden and Harris, which did, in speech and writing, cheer on the events and even establish funds and solicit monies to cover the bails and the legal fees of those arrested from participation in the riots and the mayhems and the destruction and the arson, only to be arrested and have their guilty involvement in it, then released. Yes, to pay their way out was for these two to fund insurrection. Oh, and was it Colin Kaepernick that tweeted that people all over, of all levels celebrated? Look at this. Let's check out just how undivisive and unifying this tweet of his is. When civility leads to death, revolting is the only logical reaction. The cries for peace will rain down, and when they do, they will land on deaf ears because your violence has brought this resistance. We have the right to fight back. Very MLK-ish. Much respect for Kaepernick's trotting on Martin Luther King Jr.'s dream. Kaepernick, by the way, who was already just wealthy, but just awarded $3 million of the $10 billion raised in the last many months for his, you know, his rights camp, a camp that does not empower children with skills to prepare them with the right mindset and the skill set to compete in the workplace, in the marketplace, but rather teaches them all about, guess it, white privilege and their place in it. Oh, and the other $10 billion that CBLM raised, it did not go to black communities. Much of it went to fund the Democrat white people. But, you know, white privilege. <clears throat> at least when it's advantageous. Beyond that tweet of Kaepernick's, look at how the machine is doing everything to crush a man for something he did not do. Even though that same machine establishment celebrated, funded, and financed destruction for months on end throughout this nation. <laughs> a bank in Germany is closing Trump's accounts. New York is claiming it will not allow Trump to do business there. Platforms are silencing him. The left has sold its soul. They are pushing to do the same to anyone who supported him. Do you really think it stops there? How long do we allow this without a fight, people? How long until you are moved into action in one way or another? There are many ways to action, but to sit silently and rub your hands and just hope, that's not one of them, y'all. The Democrats are not just a political party anymore. This is a hate-filled brood of vipers feasting on the ravaged carcasses of integrity. This is what it looks like when politics trades its soul and feeds its insatiable appetite and lust for greed and power. I promise you, nobody is safe anymore as long as they are allowed to continue unchecked. And I understand some people mean well by it. I get that. I think of genuine care of misinform misinformed friends of mine who I love. But to promote an ideology and a framework that is inherently racist through and through while calling those who do not subscribe to it racist is as racist as it gets. And I stand firmly against it. Look, I am all for people of every stripe in this country having equal rights and working with any communities that struggle, whether it be for reasons of economic, social and or cultural but to perpetuate a false agenda and a fake narrative built around the claims of something that isn't true, then direct everyone's attention to that false thing and fight for that manufactured fabrication while the real issues are left neglected is not going to help anyone. 
regardless of the danger of whatever label and, and claim could be made about me. I know the truth of myself and who I am, and I refuse to be bullied by ignorant digital foot soldiers typing away feverishly and adding angry and threatening emojis and social justice warriors just blathering on about what they don't understand. Rather, I will have the courage to stand for what is right and speak what I know to be true. I'm not going to fold to anyone's warped demands. As I said earlier in this entire event, the Democrats and the exploiters of the collective cultural mind cannot help but somehow manipulate and twist and spin and pervert the truth to somehow in some magical way be about the situation of race. In short, it is race baiting, and so many people snap their jaws just suddenly closed around that tantalizing bit of yum yum dangling before them like starving fish. And gotcha, the Democrats say. And I want you to remember this image of Cori Bush's tweet. I said the inherent racism based on hatred and anger spreads throughout the low informed uh, reactionary population like a gangrenous infection. This makes its way to ground level, to the pedestrian citizen just going about their normal life, whatever normal life even, even is anymore in our country. From my own Facebook timeline, someone posted this image. This is the epitome of white privilege. In case you've never seen it or, or like to act like you don't know it exists, MAGA supporters storms into the Capitol Hill, takes pics with his feet on Pelosi's desk. Not one police fired a shot. But yet BLM is considered a hate group. Black, brown people. This is not our fight. Repeat, this is not our fight. What the actual... I mean, really. Hashtag not our fight. Hashtag white privilege. I already spoke of the inherent racism coming from those claiming racism earlier in this video, so I'm not going to say as much about it now. Suffice it to say, for a race of people to take something that is not about race and pin it to the backs of another race of people... What would that, what would you call that? Oh, and white privilege, by the way, is not just pointing out some white people. It is literally stating it is every white person who is inherently racist, just in their very nature of being. Think about that. Not that most of the country voted twice for a black president to lead them, to lead. Most voters, of course, being white or that the white individuals in this country voted to give rights to the black people during their fight for their deserved civil rights. But hey, we don't need the facts, right? It's not just this post. It is post after post after post and comment after comment of angry people fanning the flame of hatred among themselves. In the leftist echo chamber, a rising up of, of these deranged individuals who have gained a very large platform and a very loud voice in this country. I don't know what is worse, the commentary on us as humans or on us now as a country. It is within that same echo chamber of the screamers. In fact, maybe that's, <laughs> that's, I think that's what I'll call them from now on. All those who have just become deranged on the left. Maybe I just coined the term screamers. Hmm. Anyway, so with the derangement bouncing off the walls of the echo chamber of the screamers is how we get to where we are today and what we see. Insanity and delusions created by people's Trump derangement syndrome, which I would not be surprised if it ever actually became some recognized as a real mental disorder. It leads to this insane subculture of psychosis. You have people like this individual here, Joel Rubin, a verified individual active in government, putting out insanity like this. Glenn Beck has the right to be upset about Twitter's ban of Donald Trump. But using a Holocaust analogy, especially only days after real Nazis stampeded our capital, is not the way to do it. He should retract his statement and apologize to the Auschwitz Museum. Do you see what they do? They literally call something literal that literally is not. And that stupid bomb explodes like dynamite with pieces of it going all over in the same like-minded people as this slobbering infant then picks up the pieces, they consume them, and they regurgitate the same trash outward and the at the general public, at least those who believe this drivel, 
they pick it up, they swallow it, they absorb it, and what they expel is picked up, gobbled down by the next low-informed disciple of stupidity, and the process continues. They would be satisfied passing that same nonsense one to another as a leftist human centipede. For those of you who know the movie, you'll understand. Except that this centipede no longer has a beginning and an end in mind. Essentially, making it, it's all lined up making every individual the person in the middle tied up as bad information and lies passes from one into them, out to the other, and back again over and over and over. And they love it. Obviously, contrary to what the left calls him, Trump is not even anywhere in the same universe as the KKK or Hitler, as the left loves to compare. The problem is they keep repeating it, and when someone repeats a stupid lie long enough, the part of the population that is dumb enough to believe it will. There were accounts of any real Nazis anywhere around there, around the Capitol, were there? You see, he, like so many high-profile people on the left, take Ilan Omar, for example, who said Trump rallies are Klan rallies, not like Klan rallies, mind you, are Klan rallies. They speak about me at every single rally. It didn't really matter where he was. Uh, right. Sometimes multiple times in a day um, as he had held his Klan rallies throughout the country. She went ahead and unabashedly and unashamedly labeled in front of the world half the nation as white supremacist KKK members. Oh, but they don't dog whistle and gaslight, right? Not the left. People like her and Cori Bush and AOC, you know, the squad, are the division of this country. Take this whole parlor thing, for example, and the misinformation and deliberate lies about it. Look at this article from Newsweek. They're saying Parler refused to monitor dangerous communication on their site. Y'all, they're claiming Parler is a white nationalist safe harbor in which planning of events of domestic terror occur. However, if you were to actually venture to Amazon's, since that's the platform upon which Parler was built and housed, if you were to venture to their statement, that is not even what they said. In fact, what is really happening is that these platforms are allowing the grossest and most vile of violent material up using it just as justification might use an old outdated law that is never uh, renounced but it's still in the books at any moment of their choosing that's most advantageous for them to pull it out another part of the claim to give credence to the the dissolving and destruction of parlor is that parlor is claimed to have allowed for the organization of criminal activity and planning and all all the organization around that storming of the capitol building but as Parler's CEO pointed out, if anybody cared to listen, that is not even possible on the platform as Parler does not have an organizational system within it like that. It doesn't have groups and, and, and events and such. In fact, as further investigation into the events in DC, which aren't really being reported, which are being directly, solely, and only to the right blamed, revealed, not at all in the mainstream media, of course, that the organization was actually done on Facebook. I want you to take very close attention of what is happening here. All of the lies about Parler, beginning with the idea that they were a gathering place for white supremacists and far-right terrorists and neo-Nazis, and all that bullshit, it is all so obviously a fake narrative put out by through the media that, that ended up getting passed around like a hot potato, and the low-information viewers who only watch mainstream media... It, disciples of their outlets as their source of information and all they hear and all the gullibly believe without a shred of inquisitiveness. Can I make that a word? Of the truth or even to jump on parlor themselves to verify whether or not what they are hearing is true. Just spreading it outward and creating even more hatred and anger among their own echo chamber of low information individuals who then point every, every single, everyone, everyone, Trump supporter or anyone even moderately on the right who have already been dubbed Nazis and such as that, and therefore making the new claim very easy as being e even more crazy and even more racist than ever imagined. This is the power of propaganda. The other power of propaganda is the low information class of citizens among us who believes it and spreads it outward. It, it, as the saying goes, it takes two to dance and oh boy, are they dancing. So check out this clip from Tim Poole that addresses just that. The CEO of Parler is firing back, calling politicians like AOC sick and evil for calling for the banning of his company's app. For those that don't know this, Apple, Google, and Amazon all 
suspended services, or I should say banned, Parler. In the case of Amazon, they suspended web hosting services, mean Parler, meaning Parler is just gone. And then following this, basically every single vendor refused to work with Parler. This is a concerted effort. It is psychotic groupthink, cult-like behavior, and anybody who sees this should be freaking out. How do we function as a society when dominoes fall down because people are terrified of associated with a company that got bad press? Press that was not true. You see, they say that Parler was hosting incitement to violence. It's the lie they use over and over again, and these pathetic and spineless vendors, the smaller ones, are too stupid to actually look into what's going on. And so, you know what? I think we're in trouble as a society because massive multinational corporations love power, and they will steal it, and they will collude to get it. Parler sued Amazon, asserting that the reason they got banned was because Twitter and Amazon have a multi-year contract and Parler was the number one app in the app store. So all of these Silicon Valley companies conspire, essentially, or, or take concerted efforts, a better way to put it, to shut down anyone who challenges their system. And they've done it many times. And their sycophantic allies in media are glad to do it because gotta get them clicks. You end up with like out of 10 million people, 60 posts where people were inciting violence. Parler removes them. Amazon says, you know what, we don't care. We don't think you're going to place it, so you're banned. What they don't tell you is that at the same time, Twitter was hosting serious threats of violence, and uh, they wouldn't remove it. And Amazon didn't go to Twitter and complain and demand they do remove it. So it's really curious about Ocasio-Cortez's position on this, getting a private company banned for fake reasons. Like it's a sick addiction, these media outlets literally lie to you, to the people, because they know that the people who are just as deranged as they will not take the time to actually verify the facts and thereby assuring we have an ever-growing culture of, I don't really want to say stupidity because this would be deeply offensive to actual stupid people, but perhaps to deranged people hypnotized by this wicked psychosis of TDS and because as I said earlier in the video, they believe the lies. People just accept it because the crowd accepts it because the masses are accepting it and, and it's getting louder and bigger and growing stronger and nobody wants to be left out on this side uh, uh, that, that questions what everybody else believes in the threat of being tagged with, with that ever feared social scarlet lettering that one is awarded when they question the narrative. Who wants that? It's not fun. Beyond just mainstream media, I have to blame even more on social media for, for where we've come because so many people have gravitated away from being the pseudo-intellectual individual who still had to try to figure things out and exchange that practice for sitting down and letting their eyes be bombarded all day by images and voices and messages that come up waiting uh, just the headlines diligently without even digging below the surface, which is why we have so many people who believe that Donald Trump only paid 750 taxes, even though the same report, 80 paragraphs in, I read it, I counted them, actually gave truth to the matter that it was not true. That is how you can have people like this individual here spreading this insane trash that is no less toxic than everything else that we've been seeing. Can we please stop calling Trump's government style Trumpism? All it does is empower him. He loves plastering his name on everything. Can we please call it what it is? It's fascism! Donald Trump is a fascist! His dad was a Nazi sympathizer and white supremacist. He is too. Money and power is a great cover that blinds people to the personal glaring flaws. I asked a few of my friends yesterday what Trump's endgame was and putting so much effort into overturning George's election because it wasn't going to change the fact that he lost. We had our theories, but it was still confusing. It wasn't until I listened to Eddie Glaude Jr. this morning discussing the insurrection and white supremacy that it finally made sense. We all know Trump singled out Counties and contests in the swing states with the highest black populations? The reason, you see, was twofold, but relates back to white supremacy and its dog whistles. 
First, by focusing on these counties, he's signaling to his supporters who believes, as he does, that black voters are not legitimate and therefore should not be counted. Secondly, he really believes he won the election because he would have won if only white votes were counted. Now, it finally made sense. I heard Joe Scarborough say this morning that I'm not saying 75 million Americans are fascists. They certainly aren't. But they did vote for a fascist candidate for president. Americans are going to have to deal with that. We're all going to have to figure a way to move forward from now. The way to move forward is to acknowledge the truth. Accept the truth and deal with the truth. There is a difference between looking at a situation in the context of reality versus trying to twist everything around to fit an agenda you want it to say, or even worse, to fit an agenda you have been told that you want it to say. Do you see how this individual conflates two different situations? Trump's presidency versus private business ownership, mentioning names on buildings and such. Is that unique to just Donald Trump? Is he the only business owner who has his name on buildings? I wonder if anybody else puts their name on any buildings. Oh, I don't know. Sam Walton, for example. Walmart. Hmm. That certainly seems like Wall would stand for Walton. The business is owner. <laughs> or look at how they talk about his father as a Nazi sympathizer. You know what? Let's, let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. So the claim is that Donald, Donald's father, Fred, was a Nazi spy in Queens, New York. It is also well reported today that Fred was arrested with, with a group of Nazis. Without going on a tangent, can we just take a quick look at a fact check on this? Let's take a look. There are no official records or credible media reports to confirm that Fred Trump was a Nazi spy. Donald Trump's father, Fred Trump, had owned many renting homes in New York in the early 1930s. Some unconfirmed reports suggested that he did not allow black tenants, including black veterans of war. Now, in 19... And again, unconfirmed. In 1927, he is arrested during a Ku Klux Klan rally in Jamaica, Queens. He was arrested along with seven men and was discharged later. The reports do not specify if he participated in the parade or if he was a Klan member. Now, Alberto Martinez, a historian at the University of Texas, wrote in his research article that based on the evidence that he reviewed, Fred might have been just a local who went to the Memorial Day Parade and got involved in the riot that occurred in his neighborhood. Later, the police arrested him and released on the same day with no charges. Even though a report claimed that many Nazi spies lived close to where Fred Trump was, there is no concrete evidence to him tying him to the Nazis. The absence of reliable sources and official government documents suggests that Mr. Fred Trump was not related to the Nazis and that he was not a Nazi spy. Do you see what they do? They make up stories. They take a pebble of fact and they build, as an oyster builds a pearl around a grain of sand, this fabricated tale, absolute and deliberate lies to discredit someone, then set it free into the world. That is how this is so detestable. Oh, and if we want to bring up stories of people's relatives being in, in their past, what about Kamala Harris's father being a slave owner in Jamaica? Huh? What? Oh, right. We aren't going to say anything about that now, are we? Or perhaps the media is just accidental, how they accidentally forgot that Joe Biden was actually groomed and supported in his early years of politics by a high-ranking member in the KKK. Even then, I can give credit where credit is due and admit that the person that Biden was very close to and gave the eulogy at four, eventually turned for that awful organization. But the left, of course, in their irrational hatred, is willing to make up imaginary stories related to Trump, but neglect the facts of those on their own side. This putrid exercise of these soulless people with zero principle and zero integrity is why I created this channel, because someone has to call them out. They talk about Donald Trump as being this evil, nationalistic individual while literally having zero idea of his policies and what they've done for his country and how to be the best country that we can be in, to, to other countries and help them out. It's to be as strong and get as strong ourselves. This is lost on them. Okay, so let's take a look at the racism claim in that, that 
diatribe written in that image I showed you? Why did counties and you know, the Trump claim to overturn the vote? Which in relation to Georgia, I created a video about called Trump's call to Georgia, criminal or something else. They happen to be predominantly black. Why? Because these counties also happen to be deeply democratic. And these people also happened to be the same county which the greatest mountains of evidence would suggest various improprieties were occurring. Being that residents happen to be black, and not just black, mind you, is nothing but simply coincidental to it, not a target against race. If Trump was such a racist, maybe we should take a quick peek at how he was celebrated by Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton in an image like this. Or how Donald Trump's first ever corporate donation was to the NAACP in the 60s in the height of the civil rights fight or how Oprah praised Donald Trump's potential run for presidency. You took out a full page ad in uh, major U.S. newspapers uh, last year criticizing U.S. foreign policy. What would you do differently, Donald? I'd make our allies, forgetting about the enemies, the enemies you can't talk to so easily, I'd make our allies pay their fair share. We're a debtor nation. Something's going to happen over the next number of years with this country because you can't keep going on losing $200 billion, and yet we, we let Japan come in and dump everything right into our markets and everything. It's not free trade. If you ever go to Japan right now and try to sell something, forget about it, Oprah. Just forget about it. It's almost impossible. They don't have laws against it. They just make it impossible. They come over here, they sell their cars, their VCRs, they knock the hell out of our companies. And hey, I have tremendous respect for the Japanese people. I mean, you can respect somebody that's beating the hell out of you, but they are beating the hell out of this country. Kuwait, they live like kings. The poorest person in Kuwait, they live like kings. And yet they're not paying. We make it possible for them to sell their oil. Why aren't they paying us 25% of what they're making? It's a joke. This, this sounds like political presidential talk to me. And I know people have talked to you about whether or not you want to run. Would you, would you ever? Probably not, but I, I do get tired of seeing the country ripped Why off. would you not? I just don't think I really have the inclination to do it. I love what I'm doing. I really like it. Also, I, it doesn't pay as well. No, it doesn't. <laughs> but, you know, I just probably wouldn't do it, Oprah. I probably wouldn't, but I do get tired of seeing what's happening with this country. And if it got so bad, I would never want to rule it out totally because I really am tired of seeing what's happening with this country, how we're how we're really making other people live like kings, and we're not. What do, what do you think of this year's presidential race, the way it's shaping up? Well, it's going to be very interesting. I, I, think, uh, I think that probably George Bush has an advantage in terms of the election. I think that probably people would say that he's got like that little edge in terms of the incumbency, et cetera, et cetera. But I think Jesse Jackson's done himself very proud. I think Michael Dukakis has done one hell of a job. And George Bush has done a hell of a job. You know, he, they all went in there sort of as semi-underdogs, including George Bush, and they've all come out. Uh, I think people that are around all three of those candidates can be very proud of the jobs they've done. You've said, though, that if you did run for president, you believe you'd win. Well, I don't know. I think I'd win. I tell you what, I wouldn't go in to lose. I've never gone in to lose in my <laughs> life. And, and if I did decide to do it, I think I'd be inclined, I, w I would say that I would have a hell of a chance of winning, because I think people, I don't know how your audience feels, but I think people are tired of seeing the United States ripped off. And I can't promise you everything, but I can tell you one thing, this country would make one hell of a lot of money from those people that for 25 years have taken advantage. It wouldn't be the way it's been, believe me. Wait, did Donald Trump just praise Jesse Jackson in that clip? But I thought he was racist. But, but praising a black man? Here, let's watch another clip from another episode of Oprah. Or two. Uh, since Smith taped as to be an apprentice uh, uh, employee, uh, what would you do? Well, I think what I do is just have to spell out the qualifications. You know, there's a lot of luck involved. When you have 215,000 applicants and we pick 16 people, in all fairness, no matter how good we are, we had all sorts of accounting firms and people doing this work and going through. So there's a little bit of luck involved in the whole thing, too, in the process. But I just put my best foot forward. I'd send in the tape, I'd say how wonderful I am, and maybe I get lucky, because there's a lot of luck. Out of that 215, I'll tell you, there are 200,000 of those people are terrific. And also, there is, I, I know this when you're looking at tapes, because I used to, you know, look at people's audition tapes. And you know, there's, a, there's an energy, there's a spark, there's an essence, there's a life that comes through in a matter of seconds. Mm -hmm. And so when all the people are going through, are you considering doing it for yourself? Yes. Okay, because when people are going through, they pop that tape in a machine, and in five seconds they decide if you even have anything worth listening to beyond five seconds. So I would say, you know, 
Pull your energy level up a couple of notches if you're going to... Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Start just screaming and jump around. Yeah, because isn't that true? There's That's a true. vibe. There's a vibe. There's an, there's an indescribable it factor that, you know, I don't think you can teach. They don't teach it in the Wharton School of Business. It's not something you can even learn. There's just an it. Wouldn't you say, That's Donald? That's true, folks. And I, and I will tell you, I went to the Wharton School of Finance, and I will say that I am sitting next to it. There is nobody <laughs> ever... It wasn't particularly political, but it was certainly interesting how Oprah and others seemed to really like him. Oh, and did he just praise Oprah, claiming that she is, is the it? As if the it factor to be a great, successful woman, a black woman? Well, except she's black, and well, I thought Donald Trump was, was racist. It's so funny how they, they do not seem to see a white cloak or hood over him in that clip, is it? So why do people make up these fantasy narratives and believe them? For the propagators of it, it is because they have a goal and that goal can never be supported by the truth. It just can't. Their entire desire, by nature, is founded upon propaganda and lies. For those who believe this stuff, it's because they are deliberately nefarious, or is it because they are genuinely and innocently, though willfully ignorant? And why do they believe so strongly in these clear and easily debunked untruths? And is Donald Trump really a fascist, or is it perhaps somebody else coming into the office that actually fits the bill of fascism better. See, I'm going to explore that in a different video, so pay attention for that. So, let me ask you, what are your thoughts on the matter? Where do you stand? How do you see all this? Do you see a false narrative being painted and you can stand back and see through it, look behind the veil and see the man behind the curtain? Or do you believe it's exactly as the media and social media tells you even though you can look at the evidence yourself and it is 100% complete opposite. What do you think? Everybody has their different feelings and, you know, and that's fine, but I'm curious as to why. And finally, folks, I'm going to ask if you, if this, if this material connects to you, if you find it of value, please like share and subscribe. That helps to do a lot to grow this channel. Maybe we can grow it bigger. Maybe we can reach more people. Maybe we can help take blinders off of some of those on the left and rescue them. That would save them. That would bring more power to our side. That would help us defeat the media and all this stuff going on to get more advocates on the side of truth and fact. I'm not saying you have to love Donald Trump. I'm not a huge Donald Trump fan as far as like a big disciple. I appreciate many of his policies and the things he did for this country, but even more, I will not stand for these lies the media propagates when I can see clearly that it's a lie and the whole country is going down the shitter because of it. No, I'm not just going to stand back quiet. I've had people send me uh, emails and text other people telling them that I am involved in conspiracy theories because I'm calling things as they are. I'm not involved with QAnon and that side of things. I'm involved with saying, hey, the media said this, this is the native source, this is what really happened, here's the facts. That's conspiracy. I've been told I'm racist. I'm white supremacist. I'm a Nazi. I'm no ally to the black community. I've been told that I am one who absolutely stands on the degradation of hu the most basic of human rights. Literally, these are the things people are saying to me. If you've been watching my videos, you know what the context is. You know what I've been saying. But this is what I get all the time. So please, if you would like, share, and subscribe, that would really help us grow. We need to do something to dismantle this insanity and this derangement, this psychosis, this world of make-believe that Mr. Rogers never could have imagined. And finally, second finally, it's like when I'm fishing, I say, this is the last cast. No, wait, this is the last cast. Second finally, folks, there is a side of our nation that has given up principle and integrity. They think they have it, but when it's built completely on fabricated lies and a foundation of shifting sand and no fundamental truths and facts, that's not principle and integrity. If we have it, we need to stand on it and we need to protect it. Set that standard high, be that example to others. And finally, 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 be wise. Use discernment and don't ever, ever let anybody ever try to persuade you, scare you, or control you with fear. Love y'all.